When I last left off, I had just unboxed the PinePhone Beta Edition, and I was still getting used to the default operating system, Manjo Arm, with Plasma Mobile. Since then, I've added a second operating system, and I've got more PinePhone accessories that I'll get into later. Today, I'm going to show you why I'm using a different operating system called Postmarket OS, and I'm also going to share whether I consider this a daily driver phone or something for the average consumer. As a reminder of how this works, PinePhone is a hardware manufacturer, and they sell the PinePhone through Pine64.com. Pine64.org is where you can find the documentation and other support. Manjoa Arm and Postmarket OS are Linux distributions, and those projects come from the Linux community itself. By all rights, this is a Linux user's phone. And what I mean is that you can get into the command line easily, and with just a few instructions, you can go right to work, writing your own applications in various languages, such as Python. Since my first video, my phone has taken some physical damage, but this is only cosmetic, and the hardware is working fine. In fact, my overall impression has improved ever since I installed Postmarket OS. I think this is because it comes across as being a slightly faster and more polished operating system, at least for the Fosh version. The system isn't perfectly stable, and there are some applications that have crashed, really to the point of having to do a hard reset. This is somewhat rare, and I honestly can't remember the last time I did it. The process of supporting a second operating system is easier than it sounds. I won't go into it now, but you can check the link in the description, and really all you're going to need is a microSD card, a card reader, and a application such as Bellina Etcher, and the process after that isn't very much different from setting up something like a Raspberry Pi. Download the Linux image to your computer, use the application to flash that image onto your microSD card, insert the microSD card on your phone, and when you power up, the new operating system should be good to go. And by the way, I could easily undo this at any time by just simply taking out the microSD card, and this would take me back to that original default operating system. That microSD card needs to go very close to your SIM card, so just be sure to get the order correct. And speaking of the SIM card, ever since I started using Postmarket OS, I've had a much easier time getting the internet connection to work, and in fact it seems to be almost instantaneous now. With the default operating system, it seemed to always take a few minutes to do that, and I never found out why. I've got to wonder why Postmarket wasn't the default to start with, but I guess it is what it is, and they do make it easy to switch. In terms of battery life, it does underperform my current Samsung Galaxy A11 and A13, so just keep that in mind if that's important to you. I'm obviously having no trouble making calls or sending texts. The Angelfish web browser seems to do well enough, but I've got to say I'm still having trouble with the cameras. But it's a known issue, and I'm inclined to think this is a hardware limitation. For the record, I'm using the Megapixels app version 152, and I did recently purchase a second Pine phone for testing purposes, so we're going to see how that one does later. So what's my overall disposition? In summary, I can only call this a Linux developer's phone. Presently, I use this as a secondary daily driver, meaning that I use it often enough, but I need to expect the unexpected and always have another phone on me. The Pine64 website was pretty transparent about this. At best, I can say that this has probably replaced the Raspberry Pi that you saw earlier, where I had attached a open frame monitor and even a set of speakers. Both have Linux, both have a touch display and audio, but which is the one that I can just put in my pocket? If you are looking to purchase a Pine phone for yourself, then I would ask myself three questions. First, do you have a backup phone? Second, is your wireless carrier supported? Don't just assume that it is. You should probably go to the official wiki, and those web pages are going to maintain an active list of supported wireless carriers pretty much across the globe. The third question is whether you can tolerate Linux debugging and administration. That is, using the command line, occasionally changing config files, retrieving log files, using remote access, changing file permissions, and at a minimum using that command line to do updates. Now, I've got a whole lot more to say about this phone, and as soon as possible, I'd like to get started using that UART connection and the I2C interface, since I'm betting these can link to Arduino. What I really depend on is your feedback. By the way, videos on the attachable keyboard and the I2C adapter are on the way, so stay posted, and check back for the next video in electronics, robotics, and communication systems.